Well, praise the Lord, child of God. It's so good to be with you again and to share some of God's word and put into your spirit some of the things that come directly from God's word, right out of the Bible. I, I, I'm not gonna give you a lot of my opinions. I'm just gonna read you what the Bible says. And one of the things that's powerful is the fact that God wants you to have more than enough. So many times we pray, let there be enough. But really he says, Jesus came in so many dimensions to give you more than enough. Uh, John 10, 10, everybody knows that verse and, it, and it's, a, it's a safe verse. It doesn't say anything about finances, but <clears throat> in, in, inside of this verse is the finances message also. It says, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So he wants us to have the abundant life. Well, if, if you don't look to that verse even for financial abundance, uh, just, just grasp the fact that God is pro having abundant life. And then go further, a little bit further. And he says in Psalms 23, five, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies, thou anointest my head with oil, my cup, runneth over. Now, now, there again, you have more than enough, more than enough. I haven't said anything much about finance yet, but now you get a little bit into finance because Simon Peter was a fisherman. He made his living fishing. The more fish he caught, the more finances he got. And when God told him where to fish, and he cast a net on that side of the boat, you'll find over there in Luke 5, 6 through 7, it says, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break, and they beckoned unto their partners that they should come and help them. So they came and filled both ships so that they began to sink. Well, it sounds to me like there is a lot of money being made here by more than enough fish, but let's, it really gets even a little stronger. Uh, 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 the Bible goes on and tells us that it'll go on until it's running over. One more time, Luke, it's New Testament. This time, Luke 6, 38, given it shall be given unto you. Now, whoa, wait a minute. Now we're getting into something about giving here, but let's hear it through and see if God doesn't want you to have more than enough in every dimension of your life. And here we start with the financial aspect. In Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, shall men, and running over, shall men give unto you your bosom. Are you getting that? Not just, uh, just full, but running over, more than enough. So he wants it to be that when it comes time to finance the kingdom of God, that you're not having to take and reach into the rent money or the house payment money, or really he'd rather you didn't have a house payment. We'll deal with that another time. But he says he wants it running over. And then Ephesians 3 and 20, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. Now he says, look, I want this thing to come to you uh, overflowing more than you can even ask, even or think. Now, just try him out sometime and just ask for something that's way out on the perimeter of what you can ask or think and then see if God doesn't work that thing out for you because his word is true and he can't lie. And he's speaking of all these different dimensions. Yes, uh, the good life, the good marriage, the children raised well, all those things. But then too, the core of all of that usually falls down on a financial ability to preach the gospel. For instance, how do they preach? except to be sent. And if you don't have more than enough, see, if you just barely have enough, you don't have any money to send people around the world. You know, it's just like even this, um, just in this last little bit of time here, my wife and I were, were putting a well in one of the African cities and uh, a pretty good piece of finance, but if we didn't have more than enough, I couldn't put that well in. I could maybe send $10 and 150 of us get together and put in a well, but instead we find that it can be done like that if you have more than enough. And <clears throat> when you get down into 2 Corinthians uh, 8, 1 through 3, we find out here that you don't have to wait till you have more than enough to start giving. Because look what happened to these Macedonians. This is powerful. In Ephesians, uh, uh, in uh, 2 Corinthians 8, 1 through 3, the Living Bible, now I want to tell you what God has done for the church in Macedonia though they've been going through hard times. Now, this is not good times. This is not fat times in Macedonia. They're having hard times. They have mixed their wonderful joy with their deep poverty. Listen, it goes beyond just need. They're in poverty. But in their poverty, they started giving. And they're giving. And that result has been an overflow of giving to others. Now, as they gave in this time of not having enough or barely enough, 
and sometimes less than enough poverty, they started giving and an overflow started happening. And now they were able to give to other ministries. And finally, they got to be one of the primary financial churches that sent the Apostle Paul around the world. Now, this is the thing that I want to just put into your spirit today, that if you will just make that step and say, I'm going to give to God. Well, Brother John, you don't understand the situation I'm in. Listen, circumstances, God wants to move you to another circle and you'll be standing in an abundant circle. And right now, I just would ask you to, to make, make that move. Let this be the time that you say, I, I'm going to give. And I'm not just going to play with God with change. I'm going to give God a real offering. It's going to be exceeding abundantly above all. I was th even thinking, but I'm going to make it to God and I'm going to give a great offering. Let me pray over that offering with you now. Father, I thank you that as this offering comes forth, it comes forth in biblical proportions. It's been motivated by biblical principles, God, and we now in biblical proportion. It comes forth 30-fold, 60-fold, even 100-fold, and I speak it's done in the strong name of Jesus. Be blessed and be prospered. Oh, I hope you took advantage of that. And if you didn't, sit, think about it a few minutes and get involved. Watch God take you out of the barely enough and take you into the more than enough. Bless you. We'll talk again soon.